in lesson four, we now start looking at entropy. And uh, entropy can have a lot of meanings in, in various settings, but one of them that is often used is that as a measure of information, as well as that of a, as a measure of uh, disorder or uncertainty. And in this lecture, I would like to start looking at entropy from an information theoretic point of view. And uh, that's why we first look at uh, so-called information measures. We start with a with a purely combinatorial framework uh, for information. So suppose x is a finite non-empty set and we choose an element in x and want to communicate this information to uh, which x we've chosen to someone else. So assume we have like a, a set x here X has finally many elements, right? And we choose one X in here and want to tell the, another person, right, which uh, element we chose. Okay, the question now is the basic question of information theory is how many bits are needed to transmit this information about X if nothing else is known about X but its cardinality? So in this setting, we can simply assign every element in X a fixed length binary code. So that such a code is just a mapping from X to binary string of a fixed length N, and it's a one-to-one -one mapping. So every uh, element of X gets a different code word, and then just transmit C of X. So for example, Let's assume we have our set X and X has six elements. And now we assign every element a code. So a binary code, so this would get zero, zero, zero. This would get zero, zero, one. This would get zero, one, zero. This would get zero, one, one. This would get one, zero, zero. And this would get one zero one and then we simply transmit the code word of the element we have chosen right, let's say we have chosen this one so then we simply transmit uh, zero one one to the receiver and uh, if we have agreed upon this coding beforehand with the receiver well then upon receiving this code you can uh, um, reconstruct the original X. So if this was our little X here, then the receiver can reconstruct this. How many bits do we need for this? Well, from in this example, it's easy to see that we need about log two of the cardinality of X bits. So here we have uh, six uh, binary logarithm of that uh, and rounded up would be uh, three bits as can be seen here. And uh, in this lesson, unless otherwise stated, um, all logarithms are binary because that's our usual coding method. So if we usually drop the two and just write lock to mean lock two. So the combinatorial interpretation of entropy is, uh, is then very simple. So the information are in contained uh, in the set X are just the beat bits needed to transmit information about an element of X, which is just the log of the number of possibilities, so which is just the logarithm of the cardinality of X, right? What is usually done, and uh, we will do that too here, is to consider this a similar question in the probabilistic setting. So now assume we have X still our finite set, but we have a probability measure P on X and we draw an element from X at random now, according to P. So we have still our X, but now certain elements have higher probability. So let's draw them as big dots and then other elements have small probability, higher probability, smaller probabilities, and so on, right? And now the question becomes, can we somehow use 
this information that is contained in the probability distribution P to design a better code. So let's make this more precise. Can we design a code C that is now not necessarily of fixed length anymore, such that the expected length of a code word is minimal, right? So here in this example, we would then, of course, assign shorter code words, code words to the events or elements with higher probability because they are more likely to be chosen right, or drawn right, and hence uh, transmitted more often. Whereas these elements here have small probability and hence have a uh, uh, smaller chance to be drawn and uh, would, would receive longer code words. And uh, we will see that these considerations are precisely a one way that need us lead us to the notion of entropy. So one way to arrive at entropy is going through uh, uh, probabilistic transfer of information and then designing code words, codes that um, minimize the expected length of a code word. Another way of looking at information or an entropy is the following. We can look at information gained uh, to be the same as the amount of certain uncertainty removed. So let's look at it in the combinatorial framework. So now instead of giving a full description of the element x, little x that we draw from the set, we only give a set A that contains it. Right? How much information about x do we gain from knowing A? Well, um, the smaller A is compared to, to x, the more information uh, we gain and the more uncertainty about x we uh, remove. Right? And uh, in particular, if A is equal to X, we gain no information at all, right? So if we have our set X here, and here's our element X, but now we only get to know that it's in some set A, right? Uh, the information now is somehow determined by the size of A compared to the size of x. So if it's just the singleton set of x, then it's the most information we can gain. So to quantify this um, mathematically, what we are looking for is a function i that is defined on the rationals, positive rationals between 0 and 1. Um, so since we are working with finite sets here still, so we can work with the rationals, that somehow measures or quantifies this by means of a real number. Right. And the idea is that I of the relative size of A relative to X measures the information content of A. And uh, from what we've seen before, uh, this function I should have the following uh, properties. Uh, the information of uh, uh, one should be zero, right? So if A is all of X, then this uh, is one and uh, in this case, we should have no information gain. And the other property should be that i is decreasing, right, in this uh, ratio, size of a over size of x, right, and uh, obtains its lowest value at uh, when a is equal to x. Note that we do everything as a function that only depends on the size of a. So the cardinality of A, uh, not of A uh, on A itself. Um, and that's justified because we, we assume that we know nothing about X, but its cardinality in the, cardina in the combinatorial setting. So then observe now that this function, right, given by the negative logarithm of a cardinality of A divided by cardinality of X has exactly these properties here. Right. So that's a possible candidate for uh, such an information content function. And we will see in a moment that it's in a certain sense the only possible function. 
So now we can generalize the whole uh, thing to uh, uh, the probabilistic setting. So now let x be mu a probability space. So not necessarily finite anymore. So just any uh, probability space. And uh, we generalize the previous approach now as follows. So what we do now is, of course, we um, no longer uh, look at uh, the cardinality of i over x. This now becomes replaced or is replaced by the measure of a. So you should think of the uh, function i that we are looking at as a function i of the measure of a. And as before, we want to have these two properties, i1, that the information gained for uh, almost sure events right, is zero. Right? So if, uh, if uh, we have an almost certain event, then uh, we don't get any information from that for our point x randomly chosen in the, in the space. Well, and it's decreasing in the measure now. Right? So the higher the measure, the lower is the information we gain. Now, that is straightly carried over from the uh, uh, combinatorial setting. But in the probabilistic setting, we have another uh, uh, factor that we can now uh, integrate into our um, axioms, so to say, for information, namely the notion of independence. So. The idea is that I have my uh, my element x in little x in the space uh, capital X, right? And through some event, I gain the information, right, that x is contained in a, in a certain set A, right? But then, independently of that, I also gain the information that uh, x is contained in another set B. And uh, these uh, events are independent. So how should that influence the information I become? Well, if it's if this is information is gained independently, right, then this should the information gained through these events should add up. So the the, it, the function should behave additively. That means that whenever I have two independent events, which measure theoretically or probabilistically, just means this, right. The measure of the intersection is the uh, product of the individual measures. Then that means that the information uh, provided for the intercept by the intersection of the two should be the sum of the individual per information provided. And now, if you look at this formula here, right? In particular, if you, if we know or assume that. Uh, mu of the intersection is just the product of the measures, then this uh, automatically suggests that to use the logarithm function, right? Because it has this property of uh, um, turning multiplicative uh, relations into additive ones. And uh, this is indeed true. Uh, namely, we can prove the following proposition. If I have a function defined on the uh, non-negative uh, on the positive uh, reals in the unit interval and that function is continuous so it, um, we have to have as an additional assumption that the information depends continuously on the size of or the measure of a set which is a reasonable assumption so why would we ac accept the information to jump uh, at some point right um, so continuity is, is a totally reasonable assumption. And this uh, function satisfies these three axioms from the previous slide. Then there must exist a constant c, right, such that our function i is just c times minus c times uh, logarithm of x. So essentially, it is uh, the negative logarithm uh, and um, uh, scaled by, by a constant. So now uh, we can conclude from this lecture that uh, in, in, in a certain sense, minus c times log, if we, if we accept these axioms that we just listed, then minus c times log or minus log uh, 
is the only reasonable information function to work with. And uh, based on this information function, we can now move on in the next lecture to define entropy. And um, in, in this setting, entropy, we can just define as expected gain of information. And we will see the, the precise definition uh, uh, in the next lesson, um, well, next lecture. Uh, and we will also see that this then definition of entropy also gives us uh, the, the coding oriented uh, approach, namely entropy as the minimal uh, expected code length for a coding of a, of a set. So we will see how these different approaches uh, all lead to the same concept.